hey, it's another update video, but this one seemed necessary because a lot of things are changing, especially on the Patreon. Remember when I was like, I'm a human machine built for content like a year ago, and then I totally changed my Patreon to reflect the idea that I was a human machine built for content, and then I spent like the rest of 2017 well, aside from a little gap of about a month in the middle, being a human machine built for content. And the Patreon went great, and everyone had a great time. But then I decided to change things up, and no longer present myself as the human content machine in the same way. I'm still working just as hard as I was before, it's just that now I work on big projects instead of on small ones. And unfortunately, this means that the way the Patreon was thought out doesn't really make sense anymore. Now, Patreon has always advised that you make your best reward the cheapest so that the most people will sign up for your Patreon, rather obviously. I decided against that wisdom back when I switched my Patreon because of the fact that I was making so much content as it was, so much stuff that was not specific to my patrons, that I figured the only way I was going to have people who wanted to pay for even more content was going to be like the really hardcore people who, you know, were spending all their time watching me and who cared about my stuff a lot more than other people. So whereas I thought that this slew of smaller time content didn't necessarily appeal to as big of an audience, it did appeal to my niche audience more strongly. And as a result, I figured I'd just put the best stuff on the higher tiers so that those passionate fans could fund this empire going forward. However, as I switched the nature of the content that I'm making over to be more focused on quality over quantity, um, a lot of those people seem to be disappointed that they don't think the quality increase is like proportional to the decrease in quality or perhaps they just aren't happy with the nature of increasing quality and in, that i have in my head where to me that involves a lot of fun wacky colors and lots of audio visual synchronicity stuff and just like weird like c codifying of objects in the background and my idea of what is high quality is maybe a little bit more esoteric than some of my fans uh, would think who come to me more just for the messages and not so much for you know all the crazy editing or the, the weird additional stuff some people don't even like that I do like hard cuts now like people miss when my vlogs were just 18 minutes and maybe there was one cut in the whole thing from where I fucked up really bad but like what those people don't appreciate is the reason I do the hard cuts now is that I spend just more time thinking about what I'm going to say, I prepare it better, and then that way, like, I, you know, I'll say a fully articulated phrase, then stop and think for a minute, and then say another fully articulated phrase, as opposed to a constant outpouring of, you know, like what you're hearing right now. Now, if you were a $15 patron at this time, it probably meant that you were watching all of my content as well as these podcasts. Because if this nature of the podcast was basically just that it was covering anything I didn't touch on in my actual videos. I have the two weeks review, which is where I just literally reviewed things that I consumed that I didn't think I'd get to talk about in a video, mostly video games. And then I also had Digi Does Life, where I just talked about what was going on in my life at any given time. Now, these shows actually ended up complicating the nature of the After Dark channel in an unforeseen way, which is that, or and also Let's Plays in an unforeseen way, which is that I could never keep track of what I had said where. I had so many different shows on so many different strata of, like, reachability, where, like, you know, most of my fans were on either the main channel or the After Dark channel. And for a long time, if you were subbed to the After Dark channel, that meant you got all of the obscure stuff. But now that there's Patreon and there's different strata of that in itself, so much smaller audience, obviously, than what's going on on After Dark, but one that I take even more seriously because they're the ones who pay my bills. And being on YouTube doesn't barely makes me any money anymore because all my videos get like demonetized or removed or... It's just been a struggle, you know, in general, to make any money off of YouTube. But, which it has been for everybody. You've heard that fucking story. Now, say you're a $15 patron who misses the frequency of content and doesn't think that the balance has been struck with making it better. 
Now the question of worth appears when it comes to the $15 podcasts, because it's no longer that you're paying $15 for this huge amount of Digibro content, and then this podcast is just kind of like, you know, a, another cool piece that you get on top of that. Now it's just you're paying $15 for this podcast and, you know, videos that maybe that are not only fewer, but you might not be as interested in. So this obviously creates a problem for me where, you know, that radical sort of faction of followers that I was trying to appeal to in the way that I structured my Patreon are not necessarily the ones who are the primary focus of the content that I'm making going forward. And there are a lot of people who are interested in the new style of content, but maybe are not interfacing with me the same way that those fans were at the time. This isn't so much to say that my fan base has changed as that the engagement they have with the content has changed. And if the Patreon was set up to favor the people who wanted me to put out constant content, and I'm not doing that anymore, then it needs to be changed in such a way that those people will be able to better maximize their, you know, engagement with what I do by being able to have more content but not having to pay $15 for it when you're not getting the breadth of what you wanted before. And then also to make that stuff available to newer patrons now that it's not just like another thing stacked on top of this endless torrent of content you were already getting. Now it's like, hey, you can pay five bucks and you get an, you know, you get another hour and a half, which is like a lot more than what you're getting, you know, what it, what it used to be. The two podcasts that I had going, each 45 minutes long and releasing bi-weekly, were The Two Weeks Review and Digi Does Life. Eventually, I decided to fuse these into one hour and a half long podcast just called The Two Weeks Review so that there'd be less stratification between the like really extreme this is just about like my thoughts and my life and what's going on with me right now and then the like just straight up reviews of things that I had consumed. Instead, it's more of like a flowing review of the two weeks as they happened. I sort of start from the beginning and I just review everything that happened either to me or, you know, things that I consumed and then I sort of extrapolate off of those, you know, some semblance of a greater meaning, I suppose. Uh, you can listen to the first episode of the Two Weeks Review, the, the new version that started a few, like a month and a half ago, I guess, when I fused these. Um, that is available now to all patrons. If you're a patron at all, you can listen to it so that you can decide whether you want to jump up to the $5 tier if you're someone who's just a regular-ass patron. Also, I've now made it so if you're a patron at all, you have access to the blocked and unreleased videos archive. I used to have that on the $3 tier basically just because I wanted people to sign up for more than $1. Like, I wanted, because I don't think my, my fan base is like so gigantic that I'm going to get a shit ton of $1 patrons, I wanted people to try to patron at least a little bit more than that. But honestly, I think that at the rate my videos have been getting taken off the internet, um, and the amount of people who will ask me to have them back up, it would be better to just have it so that all patrons can have them. Because as it's been going, typically if there's a video that I want to be online, I try to find a way to make it publicly available again. So, like for instance, the Asterisk War Sucks Part 4 has been down for like a month now, and I had submitted a counter notification because it had a strike, just like normal, um, but after the two weeks were up, it has just said notification pending final review ever since. And the video has not come back as of this recording. So I had thought that that video would just come back after two weeks like normal, but now it's down and obviously I can't put it back on YouTube. It'll get taken down again. Um, I don't know where else to put it. So I was just going to upload it to Mega until I get it back on YouTube. And once I do that, how do I get it to everybody like I can't not everyone follows my Twitter not everybody you know do I make a whole update video about it I don't know so basically if you're a patron you'll be able to access anything that's down um, I'm gonna put up get it gonna get back the ass war back part four back up soon um, as soon as I can get my hard drive that has it connected and uh, upload it and then I've got other stuff that's missing that still needs to be re-uploaded stuff gets taken down so frequently and I am a one-man show like it's really hard for me to get around to all this. Uh, well, I'm not really a one-man show anymore. I've got an assistant. But, like, 
you know, between the two of us, we have to keep track of not only our own work and what we're doing and putting out new content, but fixing all the old shit and getting it back online, um, which is a turning into a constant process. And, um, you know, all the other stuff that's going on. So, yeah, that's now available to everybody. The Discord is still available to everybody. I The Discord had not been a thing when I made the original uh, Human Content Machine update. I added the Discord, like, in August or so. And for a long time, it was very active. Um, eventually, a lot of the members sort of split off and go went to go make their own Patreon or their own Discord, you know, the people who'd become friends or whatever. So uh, if you want to find your own click, come to the Discord, form clicks, and then leave and go hang out with your clicks. Um, just stay a patron because, you know, remember who got you your new friends. It was this guy. Also, in addition to that stuff, I tend to just post, like, random stuff on the Patreon when I'm not sure what to do with it. Like, if, uh, if I make a video and I can't get it online in any way, like, I had one that was called Digibro Analyzes a Random Low-Key Porn Thread on A, and that video I couldn't get onto the internet anywhere except for Mega, so I was just like, fuck it, this is just going to my patrons, so I sent it to them. There were three uh, commentary tracks that me and my wife did over the movies Bow the Visitor, Guyver Out of Control, and... Um, uh, Dirty Pair the movie, and it was because of the warm reception of those by the people in the Patreon that we decided to do basically the entire Corrupting Your Kids channel as well as, um, you know, the Project ACO commentary we did on that channel and the whole randomly watching seasonal bullshit series. So you have them to thank for that, for encouraging that, if you're a fan. Um, if you're not, then that's, that's fine. That's fine. It's not actually fine. Commentary videos at me and Davudu where we go back through my entire history of all my videos and we comment on them at great length. Um, those are staying at the $10 tier as they were. I think they're still something that will mostly appeal to like deep lore Digibro fans or you know people who need like an endless amount of content because there are over a hundred hours of me and Davu commentaries. Literally over a hundred hours. Because e each of them's like three and a half hour, or usually three hours long is like what the total average is, I think, across all the episodes. They're supposed to be two and a half hours, but then we miss episodes and we end up making super long ones, and then some of them just turn super long because it takes forever, because we get way too into what we're talking about. We just did the Psychopaths one that was literally six and a half hours long, I think, just for the Psychopaths versus Psychopaths video. So yeah, they get out of hand, but like, there's a lot of that content, so if you sign up for that tier, and you haven't heard any of it yet, you are stepping into literally a world of Me and DeVu podcasts. And if you like listening to Me and DeVu talk, if you've never heard us talk together, I'll put some links to other podcasts we've done below. Um, you know, it's exactly like that, but for 100 hours. So have fun with that. Then we got the live stream tier, which was previously $20, and I lowered it to $15, pretty much just so that more people would be on the tier, because the live streams go pretty well, but there's not usually a huge turnout. There never has been more than, like, you know, 7 to 10 people there at a time, and mostly we've done it as a QA. and a It's mostly been, like, people ask me questions for an hour and a half, two hours, and then, you know, it's supposed to go for two hours, but if we just literally run out of things to do, sometimes it doesn't last that long. So, you know, I want there to be more people so that it's a more energetic chat and there's more going on. I don't think there's any reason it needed to be $20 other than that. I wanted it to be more expensive than the previous tier. So, you know, there you go. Now it's 15 by the way, every week, uh, assuming that she remembers, uh, May does the weekly Patreon roundup where uh, she just takes all this content I've made across all the different channels, the SoundCloud, the Bandcamp, all the other stuff, everything I'm working on, and she lists it all. It's something I used to do, but then I was in incompetent and would never do it on time, so I've now got her doing it. She's currently back there fixing all the Patreon rewards so that they are for the proper tier, because, uh, you know, obviously when I changed everything, we had to go back through every single post and s change it to be from available to $15 to available to $5. That's what she's working on over there. There's also two new reward tiers that replaced the old $20 and $25. So 
initially there had been a $25 tier, which was that I would sing all of the patrons on this tier's names to the tune of an anime song. Now, the idea of this was that people who are on the highest tier on Patreon, usually Patreon advises you to just give them credit in some way. That, like, having your name in a video or something is, is, the, is the best reward to have as your top. And unfortunately, the way that I've always written my videos, I just didn't think it, there would be space in them. I thought it would come off forced and nobody would sit through it because why would you watch that? Like, I usually click away when YouTubers get to that point. I mean, I assume that if you are one of the names, you would watch, but there are some YouTubers who, because they have a loose enough format with their content, are able to incorporate those sections in a more sensible way. Like, H Bomber Guy is pretty fun, like, you know, skits he does while the names are scrolling on the screen and you can hear him, like, overdubbed reading it. It just wouldn't really fit with my style of content until now because of the fact that I'm about to launch into this big, huge series called How They Marketed. Now, if you haven't heard me talking about this yet, How They Marketed is a planned 26-episode series with a film trilogy afterwards. That is how I am currently planning it. It is fully planned. I know what every episode's gonna be. I know what they're all gonna be about. Some of them are already written. Episode 1 is completely written and is in the production, well, will be in the production stage once Davu is finally done with the video he's currently working on, which I was really hoping would be out before I had to make this video so that it would show you an example of exactly what we're working on that's taking so long and why, you know, all these changes need to happen to the style of content. Because basically, I've just been doing pre-production work on all these big future projects. Most of what I've done in the last couple of months has been working on this How They Marketed series so that it can progress, you know, and, and, and like, have a, a narrative that is planned from the start. I keep insisting that it has a narrative. People are probably not going to know what the fuck I'm talking about until they start coming out. And even in episode one, only the seeds of it will have been planted. So it's going to take a while, I think, before people really catch on to what the hell it means for it to have a narrative. But there is there is a story being told with the series, and it needs to be fully realized before any of it comes out. Because it's basically like writing a novel. Like, this is going to be a totally constructed piece of work. So... While it can be post-produced in parts where, you know, it doesn't have to be fully written for it or for the first episode to be edited, you know, but, like, um, it, it does have to be fully considered before it can be written is basically what I'm saying. So, in addition to that series starting up, I also wanted to reinvent the Finish or Fail series to put it on the main channel. And to do this, me and Davu came up with a new editing style because... Uh, basically, god damn, this fucking, this fucking fan is just getting louder and louder by the second. Finish or Fail was a very popular vlogging series, and it's because I could just rattle off my quick thoughts about every new show, and a lot of people just really want to hear me talk about current anime, and I don't do a lot of it because I try to ignore it, because it's not really the way I engage with anime for the most part. I prefer to watch shows after they're finished, and I don't really care about watching it immediately after it's finished. I'm willing to wait a few years while I watch other stuff that I'm interested in at the moment. So, with Finish or Fail before, it was basically about plowing through the largest number of shows possible and reviewing them along the way. Well, this caused a couple of problems for the format of the video. First of all, if I was talking about every single show, sometimes I really didn't have time to form any kind of nuanced opinion, or I'd be very dismissive of certain shows, and just even, like, giving a shot to shows that I obviously shouldn't even be giving a shot to. Like, sometimes that was all I had to say about it. It's like, why am I watching this? So, I wanted to reinvent Finish or Fail in a way that... I can deliver a more nuanced point and talk about shows that people would actually expect me to like. You know, I think most people have a good enough grasp on my taste that if the latest MMO, you know, trapped in a video game show comes out, I'm probably not going to watch it. Like, I think everyone knows that. But when I drop a show like A Place Further Than the Universe that a lot of people compare to K-On, people get confused. and. That's why I'm making a, a video about exactly that. The first episode of Finish or Fail is about that, and then two other shows. I don't want to spoil the whole thing, but um, the other two shows are, are shorter ones that probably not as many people will, will, will honestly care about. But, like, I have some, you know, interesting little thoughts on them that I wanted to get out there. So, yeah, basically, it's just going to be shows that you would have thought I would watch 
Um, and some of them I finish. I mean, it's finish or fail. Not all of them will be fails. But in addition to the fact that we're changing the editing style so that I can prove my points better because I have a habit of just saying things in videos and then not really proving that that's true and so people argue against it. So basically we're trying to show a lot more proof and have it so every time I say like here's what this character does we will then show you an example of that and like you know just as a result of trying to do things this way Davu has had to rewatch all the shows I talk about in order to make sure he gets the right moments. And, you know, in addition to that, there's segments of the video that are edited by me that I was spending time on that I mean, there's like six minutes of the video that's edited by me that is not, you know, hasn't been able to come out because it's a part, it's trapped inside of this larger video. So there's just a lot of stuff going on in these productions. And Davu's also been really busy because his life completely changed. He moved across the country. He moved in with his, you know, current life partner and, you know, managing their lives has taken a lot of time out of his ability to be able to work on my videos and it's unfortunate that the videos I was spending most of my time on are ones that I then had to pass on to him and now he's spent you know an additional month on top of the month that I already spent on them so like you know there's essentially two videos that I did all of my work for a month ago and neither of them is out yet and in the time since finishing my work on those, I've been working on a feature film, which I uh, have not finished. I've got six minutes done of my feature-length documentary. I say feature film, but it's just a, you know, it's a feature-length uh, YouTube video. But I'm making a documentary about a rapper named Denzel Curry, who I'm a big fan of. I talked about this in the current Bloodborne Let's Play that's not a Let's Play I've got going. Now I gotta explain that shit. Let me take you back to a simpler time when I had just the Digibro, Digibro After Dark, and Digibro's channels as the three main strands of Digi content. You had Digibro After Dark, which could reliably release videos at least once every couple of days, but it was always going to be at random times and random subjects and random lengths. Then you had Digibro's, which was going to come out every day and be like 20 to 30 minutes long. Sometimes it was late. Often it was late. but And often it would go on hiatus if we were too busy as the years wore on that we were doing the show. And so when I moved away, obviously it became Digi in May instead of Digi Bros because I didn't have access to my brother Victor anymore. And the Digi and May show was actually even more popular because it was longer, but still daily for the time that it lasted. Um, and, like, you know, it was still me, and I had good chemistry with May, and she would ask me just a lot... She has more engaged conversations with me than Victor did. Big surprise, we're engaged. You see, the type of content I was making at the time was by and large a product of my lifestyle. I had just moved in with May and we were like, she was working at Target, usually anywhere from like four to eight hours in a day. And I was, you know, at home during that time and I would usually do like podcasts and shit while she was out or while she was asleep. So I was able to do this sort of human content machine lifestyle by like, you know, anytime there was gaps between the schedules that we had, I would get out like a two hour piece of content and then, you know, another two hour piece of content. But once she left her job and came to work for me full time, it became that the two of us could work on things together, that it wasn't just me pumping out stuff or if she is around and wants to be a part of something, me just like creating a series and then having her be a guest in my series. Now we could create series together and we could work together because, you know, we really enjoyed the chemistry that we had in all our videos up to that point and we wanted to see what we could do together. So we created the, the Corrupting Your Kids channel sort of to be an experimental place where we could just come up with random show ideas, run with it, see how people respond, uh, and then, you know, try something else if people don't like it or, like, continue doing it if it's well received and uh, just keep coming up with new ideas. And we had a ton of ideas when we started it that we haven't even gotten to yet, but, um, you know, initially we were just doing the uh, reacting to seasonal bullshit because we were watching the seasonal bullshit and we thought, 
people want to hear our thoughts on this stuff, we might as well make a video in like, you know, whatever style is most comfortable, essentially. Like, you know, it was less about making like something that we really thought people would like come flock to and more about like how can we make a series on current anime in a style we actually want to do because I didn't really want to do finish or fail like with her like we we weren't really enjoying the the style of it like I don't really want to do it for the reasons that I already said and like you know she felt like Usually it was just me talking and saying even a lot of the stuff that she had like come up with while we were watching the show Sometimes I'd be the one to say it just because I'm you know more comfortable talking in front of a camera and I am a motor that never stops running so We thought well We enjoy just commentating over stuff and like when we do that It gives more of a chance for you to watch the reason these shows get failed You know like and this was a great way to just motor through first episodes of shows where basically it was like finish or fail in rapid fire It's like you know if we don't even make it to the first episode It's a fail if we do make it to the first episode Then it will later be talked about in finish or fail You know but I'm not going to talk about all the shows that we just fucking gunned through in five seconds You know so that was sort of like a preparation for it but because of the fact that the format was so weird like we couldn't get just footage of the show onto YouTube like obviously doing those kinds of reaction commentaries would be entertaining if you could just watch the thing and have us commenting on it which we did with the Project Echo video um, that came out pretty good because of the fact that like you know it was actually uh, it was just such an old movie that it didn't get content ID'd when I uploaded it, and I, like, maybe cropped it slightly to be, uh, to be different, but, you know, other than that, like, the format didn't really work on YouTube, so we kind of canned that series, and then we were doing the Comfy cast, and, like, we sort of reinvented that, and I love doing it, but... Right now, I don't have any really, like, I don't have any daily content, and I think that's something that a lot of people were missing from me, is just that daily hit of Digibro voice, and, you know, some people enjoy Digi Daily, but that was such a random length thing, and so many were late, and people were let down by it just kind of ending because of the fact that it was never really actually going to last the whole year. Um, it was over before it even began, really, but, uh, you know, you can learn that whole story if you listen to all these new podcasts that are now available at the $5 tier, where I literally was going, explaining every decision I was making throughout the course of, like, my entire career, uh, but, you know, only the people on the $15 tier were hearing it, so... Um, maybe that's why all my fucking fans are so confused about what the fuck's been going on with me for so goddamn long. So in the hopes of finding an excuse for me to show May Bloodborne and to also have daily content again, we decided to make a new Let's Play show, but one that we don't want to market as a Let's Play show because Let's Play shows are dead. And the way that I that we had been doing Let's Plays, for anybody who was actually following Digi and May do, it did not work like a Let's Play. Like, the first one did when we did the, the Wario World game, but eventually what would, ah, eventually what started happening is because, like, you know, um, I would want to continue playing the games, or I would want to, like, get better at them, or, like, progress past a difficult part without being on camera, I would just continue playing them when the cameras were off, and so we'd have like, Let's Plays where it was, like, Tomb Raider, and there were two hour-and-a-half videos of random chunks of the game, and the rest of it I played off-screen. And, additionally, because the Let's Plays were so fucking long, like, only people who were, like, hardcore fans were gonna bother sitting through them, and, like, the best conversations might be buried deep into like this huge episode so if you wanted to link someone like a part that you thought was really interesting it'd be difficult because you'd have to find it in this whole mess additionally when you market something as a let's play if you want to put all the extra information in the title if you want to have like bloodborne let's play episode one then like by the time you try to you know have some indication of the content in the episode in your title you don't have space for it so we decided basically then instead of doing a traditional Let's Play, we would do one where we try to, like, have some, like, we have the episodes be, like, 20 to 30 minutes long, often they come out 45 minutes because we're not exactly good at keeping time, 
and we try to keep it on one sort of central thought. Now, we failed at this a lot in the early episodes because, like, we recorded a shitload of this all at once over the course of, like, a week. Um, so, like, everything you're seeing is, like, you know, there's a lot of this, like, backlogged. But the first few episodes we did, we were kind of confused about, like, what the show was going to be, what exactly is different about it from a Let's Play. Um, but as it goes on, it became sort of a... A house for um, divergent rants, uh, impassioned random rants in divergent direct. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. You'll you'll see it when it happens. But let's just say that there will be fewer titles that sound like we gave up on trying to figure out what the hell the episode was about after a few episodes pass by. Um, Shout out to the person who was like, well, they haven't done this in a while. Maybe they're trying to find their rhythm. We definitely found a rhythm. It just is a very different one from what we were doing before. But, uh, but yeah, so we basically just wanted this so that there would be daily content in a, you know, an easy consumable package. Because while I, I don't think that I need to do the human content machine level of, like, five videos a fucking day... I do think there's a lot of my audience who, you know, who likes me more as a daily content kind of guy. And Let's Plays are the perfect package to do a whole lot of that in one go because, you know, it's fun to play a video game, it's fun to have flowing conversations, and there's sort of an excuse for you to do random topics because you can just cut the camera every 20 minutes and do another topic and and you know there's a logical through line to why you are recording six podcasts in a row you know or why they release daily like you know the the game is just sort of the logic holding the series together but really it's a bunch of individual podcasts that are just about whatever they happen to turn out to be about and then we title them based on what we eventually thought they were about. Um, so that's basically how they work. But May's the one who's been editing them, and uh, she's the one, you know, doing all the thumbnails and titles for that and stuff. So that's basically like her show in a way that I am, if, if anything, I am the guest on her Let's Play now. So, you know, this is why, like, we wanted Corrupting Your Kids and, like, why the show is there as opposed to on Digibros because, like, Honestly, if we had this and the Vic and Hope show going on the same channel, I don't even think they would maintain the same audiences necessarily just because, like, we talk about completely different shit and <laughs> live in completely different places and we have nothing to do with one another at the moment. So, like, um, you know, we just kind of had it on our channel so that it can be more experimental and it doesn't necessarily have to maintain the form of a Let's Play even, you know. It's just daily content. That's the purpose of it. More than anything else, it is just daily a daily podcast series. Think of it however makes the most sense to you. Recently, I went down to Virginia Beach for a weekend where me and my brother filmed as many music videos for my songs as we possibly could for just as many songs that didn't have music videos that we could reasonably... Uh, you know, do something in Virginia Beach with the means at our disposal. So we basically milked the town completely dry. We did every idea we could come up with. I've also just been putting out tons and tons of songs. If you haven't been listening to my raps, they've been getting a whole lot better and a whole lot more diverse. So I would recommend checking out my SoundCloud. If you're someone who didn't like my music before, maybe give it a second look. If you don't even like the rap genre at all, let me tell you, my shit doesn't sound like anybody else's shit. So, like, that is irrelevant. Right now I'm working on a mixtape. I'm working on sev I'm working on so many tapes right now, because I've got currently Emotional Anime Raps 2, which would have come out earlier this month. I'm waiting on a guest feature verse, um, which is the only reason it hasn't come out yet. Uh, most of the songs are out, though, so, you know, you can just go listen to them. And then there's also... A, a tape that I'm working on that is going to be very strange and out there and uh, experimental. It's being produced entirely by myself. That one's not going to come till a little bit later. That one's going to come probably sometime after how they marketed episode one. And then I'm also working on a concept album about a cyberpunk trapped in the internet story um, that is very dark and very vicious and it's set entirely over the soundtrack of Dot Hack Sign and Dot Hack Dusk, a selection of songs 
from those. I released the first track from it on my SoundCloud the other day, and personally, I think it's the best song I've ever made. So, I mean, obviously, I didn't make most of it. I just kind of rapped over a Yuki Kajiura song, but god damn if it didn't come out good. So now it's time to talk about Digibro 8.88. Currently, we've been operating on Digibro 8.0. That's the version that comes out in theaters and never gets watched again once the proper version comes out, basically. How I would define Digibro 8.0 was an experimental stage in learning how to incorporate my old and more personal style into my newer, more open style. Basically creating a new brand of boogie pop, essentially. And a lot of what I was doing in the last few months was just to try to experiment with how to make that possible. Back in November, I had made the decision that on my main channel, I was only going to make big, involved videos from this point forward. So that was why I made the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, what the fuck, Makoto Shinkai video, which was just a huge analysis, hour and a half long. People responded well to that. Then I did the Morei Masaki video, another big, long, month-long analysis project. People responded well to that, too. Um, then I did the We Have Accepted Mediocrity video, and that took so long in editing, because Davu just went fucking apeshit on that video, and he spent over a month editing it. So in that time, I worked on some stuff that I could edit myself. I did the Shintaro Kago rap, which, you know, was itself also a huge research project and analysis video. Um, you know, it was presented differently, but if you pay attention to the lyrics, you'll realize that I had to fucking learn everything about that guy to write that song. Um, and also, you know, analyze him in the process, so I would consider that like a similar style of video to the other stuff I've been doing. But the purpose of that video um, was that I wanted to try to incorporate more of me and my style into the channel while simultaneously removing some of my own ego from it. Because, you know, one of the biggest criticisms I've always received is that people think I'm really egotistical and arrogant, and I, I kind, I mean, I've always kind of agreed, I've always said that that was true of myself, but I've experienced somewhat of an ego death in the last almost year or so, basically. It started when I rewatched like a lot of my favorite videos from a lot of my favorite YouTubers and realized that they were, you know, I thought they were better than mine and that they had more rewatch value because of the more personal elements that these pers people, you know, the, their very individual styles, their attempts to be more entertaining and not just to dryly, you know, explain things, but to try to create a film out of explaining something. And I wanted to learn how to do that. So, you know, a lot of the stuff I was doing on the After Dark channel is just experiments to try to figure out, like, how would I translate Digibro style into the content I do now? You know, and this is where we also get the, um, the artists try these marketing gimmicks video. Very much all of the stuff with, like, the color filters, all the stuff with the, the you know, teleporting around the room gimmick I'm doing right now, like, all of this is stuff that I used to do. Like, if you have, if you were someone who's followed my career for, like, a really long time, if you watch the old Modal Soul Productions channel and stuff like that, you know, I've always been someone who likes to just present the world in this kind of way. Like, lots of wacky different shots. I actually watched, I rewatched the first attempt I ever made to turn a blog post into a video that I made in, like, 2008 on, like, a shit camera and uploaded to I don't even know where uh, but it was it was on my blog it was only two minutes long and every single shot was from like a totally different weird angle one shot was just filming my computer monitor and I was reflected in it and I was like this is core digi bro and it's also you know I'm even more influenced to do it now after looking at stuff like Hideki Anno's live action work where he does a lot of those types of shots just kind of for the hell of it and you know, I just think that some some people's minds work that way, and I want to represent that in my content. I don't want to create something with the idea of trying to make it mass market appeal. I want to create something with the idea that it's going to represent what I am, and that I can do that in a way that it'll be interesting and engaging for people. And I know a lot of people would argue that my stuff has not been interesting and engaging for them since making these stylistic choices, but like... You, there's no way to learn how to do it right without doing it. Like, if I 
want to make something that is speaks to my heart and also to the audience, then that will take practice. It will not happen on the first try, you know. Um, it's just like, you know, my first thoughts are color filters and this and that and that and then like I add all that stuff in and as you watch the videos you'll see that more and more stuff started getting added in. Um, the Oliver video I did, which is extremely slept on, if you're a fan of mine and you haven't watched this video, it's probably the most effort I put into anything I've made this year on a personal level, um, aside from the upcoming like Denzel Curry documentary I'm working on. but. I developed like whole new editing techniques for that video, such as um, fading the soundtrack between instrumental and uh, vocal on versions of the songs by like just tracking down every fucking fan made instrumental of these songs because there is no official instrumentals for most of them. But I was weaving them back and forth in these really interesting ways, and you know, while also incorporating techniques I've seen in other people's videos, like you know, putting rap genius. Uh, lyrics on the screen like Fantano does for, for certain sections and just deep diving an artist's videography in order to have like clips to use on them and stuff like that. Um, you know, working on this documentary I'm working on has involved watching like hours and hours of interview clips and you know, just gathering as much crap and data as I can. But here are the things that I've been trying to transform about my content. First, I've been trying to make it a lot more journalistic. I'm trying to research more deeply to just talk about subjects that no one's really touched on. You know, like the point of my Mori Masaki video was simply that nobody had made a comprehensive like thing about this guy. There was so little information about him, even his Wikipedia page didn't exist. Like, you know, there was there was nowhere that you could just go and find someone just giving you all the info about this dude. So I wanted to be the one to do that. And, you know, to, to whatever extent I was capable of, because I, you know, I can't read Japanese, so my, my trail only went so far. You know, I, I can't really afford to, like, hire translators to work with me. If I made more money, I would. Like, if I, uh, if my Patreon was, you know, high enough, I would be able to just like randomly have Josh from Wave Motion Cannon, like I just say, hey dude, I'll give you a hundred bucks. Like, here's a fucking interview with some guy that I want you to translate on the off chance there's one sentence in there I can use in my video, you know. But like, that's the kind of stuff I want to be able to do. But you know, we're we're I'm not backed by anybody, so we got to make baby steps, and you know, it all depends on like what I'm comfortable spending and what I think will balance out you know, the risk and reward of that. You're going to see a lot of that in my upcoming videos because I'm doing a lot more collaborative work. I've been paying people to just do random elements of my videos. You're going to see that in Finish or Fail as well as how they marketed um, in a big way when episode two comes out. But, you know, I don't want to spoil anything. Now you might be wondering why I decided to film this video before the Finish or Fail came out when it could have given you a better idea of what the content's going to be like going forward. Well, simply put, I am in a random hotel in Boston, Massachusetts, house hunting right now. Now I expected Finish or Fail to be out on like the 15th, and then my Denzel Curry video was planned originally when it was going to be like a 45 minute video to come out on the like somewhere between then and the end of the month and then how they marketed episode one would be out at the end of the month now the way things are currently going um devu is still not done with finish or fail i don't know when that's coming out uh my documentary ended up doubling in length as i decided to add a lot more to it and try to make it more of a serious feature thing and then also i don't know when the hell how they marketed will come out because devu has to work on that too so like you know, I don't know if it could be out by the end of May. I might have to help him work on it. I might have to help him edit it to get it out faster. Because I kind of, like, intended it to come out this month. But, you know, whatever the case may be, the videos aren't out yet. And there's nothing I can do about it. There's no way for me to just make a great video today and put it out and be like, here's what the content's going to be. I, I'm just stuck waiting for the finish or fail video. However, I already altered the Patreon massively. So, since I already did that, I wanted to announce it and make it clear to people what the changes are and what the content's supposed to be going forward and why these changes and stuff like that. But, uh... 
I am confident that when these videos start coming out, I'm going to have more patrons roll in, people who are excited about the new direction I'm taking, and just putting way more effort into my content than I was before. And it won't always take this long for stuff to come out, because A, I'll book myself projects that I can get out in a more timely fashion, or at least in between what DeVue's working on, maybe give him stuff that... Uh, it's less intensive in the editing process because the finish or fail video is honestly supposed to come out at like the start of the month But it just because of you know it being just way more extreme of a process than was first anticipated It's taken this long, but it's not really an excuse because I could have put out something in that time I just stuck myself with an also big project so while I do think that that stuff would be nice to have on my plate right now, I am currently house hunting, and the price range of houses I'm looking at, like, I don't really know what to account for because I don't know if I should base it on what my Patreon is right now, or what it'll be after I announce these changes, or what it'll be after these new videos come out. So basically, because the Patreon changes have already happened and there's a chance that this will alter my Patreon in a way that makes me reconsider what kind of houses I can afford, I figured I'd just get it out of the way now. And then, if the Patreon increases again when we make the new videos, then, you know, it'll be reassuring to know that I'm making more than I even needed for whatever place we move into. But, you know, I just want to get a sense of, like, literally how much money am I going to be making in the near future because I have no idea. So let me take a little bit of time to explain those last two rewards that I think I was going to earlier and then forgot. The $20 reward is that I will just read your name amongst a list of other names in some part of the credits of the How They Marketed videos, whichever ones come out in the months that you're a patron. Um, so, I mean, obviously, or I guess just whichever, like, whoever is a patron at the moment that that video is being edited is who will be listed in the credits. But the series is going to go for at least over a year, possibly a year and a half, maybe even two years, depending on how long it takes to edit the whole goddamn thing. At the current rate we're going, I have no idea. But, you know, it's going to be a big, fat legacy series that I'm probably going to be known for from now on. Want to have your name on it from the get-go? Go ahead and become a patron. Want to wait until you actually believe in it? Go ahead and wait. I also have the $25 tier where I will do a 10-second ad for something in the middle of how they market it. And it can be whatever you want. It could be you. It could be your favorite anime. Whatever. I'm going to write it. I'm going to say whatever I want about it. But, you know, no publicity is bad publicity. You'll get the name out there. So if you want to have an ad in this main series video series I'm doing, it will make sense when you see the video series how it is possible to do this now when it wasn't before. Basically, in fact, once Finish or Fail comes out, you'll understand how, because the way that I've altered the format of my main channel videos will just allow for this in a sensible way. So, yeah, um, that's now a thing. Everything else is now a thing. Alter your patronage accordingly to whatever you feel is appropriate. Look forward to the new content or don't. You can just wait for it and see it yourself if that's more comfortable for you. But if you believe in me and you want to be a part of it from the ground floor, want to have your name on episode one, now's the time to sign up. I live my life by taking constant insane risks, like being in Boston looking for a house about a week before my lease is up. So you should do the same to be like me. That makes sense. Do you have anything to add? Oh, God. Uh, I'm almost done fixing your Patreon. Hey. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention there's still shitloads of Radcon content that hasn't come out yet that I'm in, but I'm not editing any of it, so I can't make it come out any faster.